Hi guys, it's Ray here from City Fan TV. Hope you're all doing very well. Hope you, if you're living in the Northern Hemisphere, especially in uh, Western Europe or e Eastern Europe, I hope you're keeping warm. It has been blooming freezing the last uh, few days. I think in my car uh, yesterday or day before it was minus seven point five, which um, which is pretty cold. <laughs> Certainly is pretty cold. And uh, yeah, that's uh, a bit hard work when in. In England, anyway, we're not that used to it. Scotland is a different kettle of fish. North of England, we're more used to it because I live in uh, in the Pennines. So it is cold and it is snowy and it is icy here. So we're a bit more used to it. But wherever you are, hope you're keeping well. Okay, this is another finance video. And as you know on this channel, if you've watched me over the years, I like talking about finances. I like numbers. I was chatting with somebody yesterday. We were working out some, some fees and he gave me a percentage. He said, this is the percent we can charge on this VAT. And bang, I actually told him what the number was like that because I love numbers. I, I used to be an accountant. I'm still a qualified accountant. I mean, I, I I qualified that long ago. I qualified that long ago that I've got, I'm a fellow of the association I qualified in years ago. And I was a fellow uh, back in 2005. I mean, that's how, I think it's 2005. That's how it how old I am, and B, how long ago I qualified. I qualified in 1994 or 95 as an accountant. A long, long time. And then in 99, I qualified as a chartered tax advisor as well. So finance was in, in my blood. Numbers were in my blood. I was really good at arithmetic at school, uh, better than my teachers. So they used to, some of them used to hate that. Uh, a couple had admired me, but most of them hated the fact that I was much quicker on the draw than they were. But anyway, so that's my background in a fascination with numbers working. Yes, I, I hold my hands up. I hold my hands up. I work for PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, biggest accountancy firm in the world. I work there as a, a, a tax advisor, uh, and I've worked in other accountancy firms. I've worked in, uh, I worked at a university as an internal auditor. So I've got a fair bit of background working in finance. So that's why I like one of the reasons I like talking about numbers. Yeah, I don't remember everything I did. I'm probably a good job because. Let's be honest, it gets a bit dry and boring to talk about finances. But we're here to talk about the 115 FFP charges, um, Judgment Day. I mean, I was going to do three videos, but I think I'm going to do one now. Judgment Day, the 115 FFP charges, and why I think City won't be relegated uh, from the Premier League uh, if once these charges are sorted out. So let's start off. You might have heard of the last couple of days, Stefan Borson. Um, who has been chatting? He's, he's ex city financial advisor. I think he's, he's an account. Uh, sorry, he's a lawyer, but he's advised city on financial deals back in the day when city were properly broke. Uh, I think he left after, uh, around the time of uh, in Shinawatra, but we were properly broke around that time. So he advised the club uh, there in those back in those days. Uh, and he was on uh, TalkSport chatting to, well, chat, he can't chat to Jim White. I mean, Jim White's uh, intelligence is, a, uh, you know, you can just, uh, you can stand in a puddle and you've got, you're at a higher level of intelligence than Jim White. But he was talking to Jim White and uh, Simon Jordan, who, yeah, he's a failed football owner. Look, give him credit. He was a football owner. He made the money to be a football owner. And he's doing, it seems like he's doing all right in, in the media these days. But, Never forget he was a failed football owner. You could say, hey, never forget I was a failed YouTuber or whatever. But digs aside, you know, Sam and Jordan's always interjecting, always trying to get one up, always trying to have the last word, the last laugh. I mean, you can get away with that sometimes with people like occasionally with Graham Souness, with Danny Murphy, with Stan Collymore, um, idiots like that. Well, not okay, Danny Murphy I quite like. But you can get away with people of low-level intelligence, you know, Trevor Sinclair. I mean, easy targets. But Stefan is a different kettle of fish. He's, um, as I said, he's a, he's a lawyer. So he's got a bit of nous, he's got a bit of brains, and he's got a bit of knowledge, and he's got a bit of uh, comeback. Now, he might not be as sharp and as acerbic as Simon Jordan with those, uh, in Simon's opinion, witty uh, quips, witty um, sh little phrases. But I think Stefan give pretty much as good as he got when Simon Jordan let him talk. I mean, he's like, let me talk, as Kevin says. Let me talk, let me talk. So, um, so yeah, you might have heard about that. And some stupid, sensational headlines in from Talk Sport, from Goal, talking about City and getting relegated, just because they pick on a few words that Stefan said. 
Uh, Stefan said, if City are proven guilty, this is huge. It is huge. If City are proven guilty, yes, there's a, a, a relegation might be the, the least of their issues. OK, and I'll get in, get into all this. But there's going to be a judgment day. So let's start. Let's start there. Judgment day. Judgment day. Uh, was it Richard Masters was uh, was it a select committee at um, in Parliament? Asking him questions. Some, I mean, some stupid people there trying to get funny digs. Oh, come on, you're not comedians. Don't try and get funny digs in and say you don't know what you're doing. I, as, as a Portsmouth fan, ridiculous. You got a chance to uh, ask pertinent, important questions, and you're doing stupid things like that. I mean, that's basically. Uh, I'm not going to go into it too much, but that's the level of our politicians these days. They are numpties. Okay, they are useless. I'm not going to keep going about politicians because I will end up getting banned or getting this video taken down. So let's leave it at that. They're just absolutely useless looking at most of them, looking out for themselves to get power, wealth, uh, and influence. Okay? That's why the world is in the state it's in, because of politicians like that. Not just in this country, not just in the West, but all over the world. They're generally in it for themselves. You, come on. How often do you see a poor ex-politician, especially if they've been at a high level? You don't see a poor ex-politician. Anyway, you can go and look at that stuff at your, at your leisure, or for my American friends, at your leisure. So um, so the judgment day is going to come. And I, But <laughs> this is the thing, okay? They said, Richard Master said, I can't tell you anything about it. A date's been set, but I can't tell you when that day is. So what blowing news is seeing anything? Um, but as, as Stefan said, and I think he's right, but I, well, I think he's partly right. He said uh, uh, it'll come out of the blue, basically. Something will come out of the blue uh, and we'll hear the verdict. Now, personally speaking, I think something will be leaked. We'll know the hearing is going on when it's going on, okay? Because I cannot, honestly cannot see people staying sh stumped, people staying quiet about what's going on. I can't. I can't honestly believe that's going to be the case. We saw with UEFA, with the UEFA charges against Man City, UEFA, somebody, at least one person at UEFA, and I suspect it might be more, I don't, you don't know how high up it goes, they were leaking stuff to the press. Now, I see a lot of stuff being leaked to the press. Martin Ziegler has an inordinate number of exclusives that go right to the heart of football governance. Why is that? Who's telling him? I mean, you've got to remember that Martin Ziegler writes, so if I remember correctly, The Times. So I'm asking you to remember, I've got to remember. He writes for The Times, who are owned by Rupert Murdoch, who owns the Sun, who get lots of stories from nowhere. Okay? And we know that the Sun pays a lot of money for stories. We know they were telephone hacking. I'm sure, pretty sure telephone hacking isn't going on at the moment. But all sorts of things going on. We don't know. It'll go back to the news of the world, what they were up to. And I think Sister Papers with the Sun, even though, right, I might say it, the Sun might, I can't remember now though, the Sun's been found guilty, but we are all of the op opinion that, or most of us are of the opinion that the Sun were at it. Daily Mirror, we're at it. Lots of newspapers were at it. Okay, some of that has come out, like with the news of the world. Um, uh, and, and others, so we know they were doing it. So the Times is owned by Murdoch, who's in charge of Talk Sport. He owns Talk Sport. He has Virgin Radio, um, Talk TV, Talk Radio, Times Radio, all these uh, media uh, outlets. So you're going to get, I think, one version of the news, and it's not always, in my opinion, it's not always an honest version of the news. When I, I hear stuff, you just think you're not telling the truth, or you're not you're being very selective. That's why some of the headlines you see in Talk Spot, very selective. You know, to, to goal said, uh, I think goal's headline was Manchester City to be relegated, or ex expert says Manchester City to be relegated on these charges. Hang on, he had said the words if proven. And they admitted that. So you've got to have an idea of the context that a lot of media outlets are there for clickbait. People accuse me of clickbait. I do a little bit, do a little bit. The Everton video about the, why they should get relegated, why it's best for football to get relegated. Yeah, okay, it was a bit, it was a bit clickbaity. It was. <laughs> and people did come and have a look. And I did get a bit of abuse for that. But hey, I hold my hands up. But so 
we've got a date we don't know you know when it's going to be but it's going to be i think this year or next year it's by next year it's going to be sorts well the hearing's going to be sorted i think city if they lose will be appealing if the premier league lose they'll be appealing well sorry if the premier league lose man united arsenal uh liverpool will be pushing them to appeal in my opinion i think that's one of the problems that we've got in uh governance of football you've got the top clubs people like arsenal liverpool Manchester United pushing for certain outcomes that benefit them because they don't want more competition. They don't want Newcastle to be able to spend whatever they want. That's why we've got FFP and PSR, uh, Profit and Sustainability Rules, which is the Premier League's version of the FFP that UEFA have got. They don't want Newcastle to be able to spend more money because if Newcastle can spend more money, they'd have bought themselves out of the situation they're in right now because we've got so many injuries. They would have got somebody in. They'd have probably got a couple more players in, in, in the summer. okay, And that would have helped their campaign this year because obviously they're struggling. They got Tenali in. He got banned. Uh, they've got loads of uh, serious injuries and they've struggled in the Champions League and the Premier League because of that. They'd have got and more players in, in the summer, and they've got players in now that they're really struggling. You know, they're, they're, they can't afford to get um, Calvin Phillips from City because of, uh, I think probably it's going to be financial issues because City are asking for a lot of money for his loan fee, which is apparently £7.5 million pounds for about four months, and then you've got to pay his wages. It's it's a thick end of £10 million quid, and maybe, uh, by the sounds of it, Newcastle have to sell before they can buy. Um, if that they didn't have a problem with FFP, if they, they could buy, spend whatever they wanted and they wanted Calvin Phillips, it'd have been done now. They'd have bought him on a permanent deal. Forget about loan. They'd have got him on a permanent deal if that's what they wanted. The big clubs don't want Aston Villa, who are in the top four at the moment, top three, to spend more money to consolidate their position. They don't want Brighton to be in a position where they don't have to sell players and that they can consolidate their position at the top. They don't want West Ham, who are in an uh, envious position where they've got a 60,000-seater stadium in London bringing in a ton of money. They don't want them to take that next step. West Ham are six at the moment. Why can't West Ham take that next step and be consistently at the top of the tree? They don't want anybody else to come along with money and... Uh, into they don't, don't want interlopers, they don't want new people to come along, they want to keep that, as people call it, the cartel going. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of problems, but anyway, that's why FFP is there to keep these people in their current place or what they were. That's what they were hoping for that to keep that status quo. They don't want, as I said, they don't want new entrance to the market and diluting the money that they can earn, diluting the titles that they can. It's all about money, power. Uh, it's like politicians. It's all about money and power and influence. That's all they're after. Winning titles is kind of secondary, but they want to be making money and they want to be winning titles. And City, uh, Chelsea before them are disrupting them and that's why they want FFP. So anyway, we're in this situation where Everton and... Forest have been charged. Everton have been punished once already. And a lot of fans are coming out and saying, hey, hang on, this isn't fair. This isn't fair. Why a City not... Why is nothing happening on City? That's been going on for years. It's very, very simple. It is very, very simple. The cases are different. The cases are not just different. They're very, very different. Okay? By the sounds of it, in Everton's case, one charge. You failed FFP. They said... We hold our hands up. Yes, we did. Uh, here are some mitigating circumstances. But one charge, you failed FFP, you admit it. Here's your punishment. Now they're appealing that. Fine. The next charge, Everton, it's basically the same. One charge, you failed FFP, you admit it. You got, you're putting forward mitigating circumstances. You say it's not fair to get hit by the same uh, punishment. Or the, uh, for the for the same crime. Well, it's two different crimes because it's on a rolling year. One for one year, one for another. Forrest will be the same. Forrest are saying, well, we're unlucky. You know, but Forrest, did you fail FFP? Did you fail all the PSR rules? Did you fail? Yes. Do you admit it? Yes. But here's the mitigation. Okay, that's where we are with them. City have got at least 115 charges against them. 115 charges. I read somewhere that for Everton's one charge that where they got... The, the 10 points uh, deduction, okay? They submitted 40,000 pages of evidence and mitigation or whatever to this. 
40,000 pages for one FFP charge that they admitted, basically saying, yeah, hold our hands up. We did fail, but we're trying to get off on a technicality or we've got some mitigating circumstances, whatever. Um, um, and Forrest are going to be the same. They're going to put thousands of pages together um, and, and try and uh, either prevent uh, uh, points punishment or to mitigate it and have it cut to the bare minimum because obviously they're near the bottom of the table. They don't want the points to push them into relegation. So um, the City have got 115 charges and it's not the same. It's not so simple. City has basically said, we're not guilty. Okay. We are not guilty. So they've got to address all these 115 charges. That's obviously going to take far, far longer to resolve to talk, you know, to get the information out there and whatever. And City, as is their right, City are fighting tooth and nail for, over every single point. Hey, if you're alleged to have committed a crime, a serious crime, would you make it easy for the prosecution, even if you're innocent, even if, let's say City are innocent, would you make it as easy as possible for the prosecution to try and find evidence, to either find evidence or to frame you? Would you make it as easy as possible for the prosecution? Or would you look at all legal avenues to make it di as difficult as possible to find ways to get um, the case thrown out? You would do whatever it takes. Let's get a bit more Man City in there. You will do whatever it takes to delay, to get thrown out to not assist with that prosecution. And people who throw it at City, well, you were guilty of something with UEFA because they found you 10 million quid for not cooperating. City, one of the reasons City didn't cooperate because they were still, they were said they were stolen emails, mishmashed together, trying to concoct a case against City and UEFA were leaking information. Would Why would you want to help somebody who's leaking information and giving you bad publicity, bad press? So I totally understand that. So you sit here well within their rights to fight this um, and push it as hard as they can and make it as difficult as possible to be prosecuted by the Premier League, okay? That's the second thing. The third thing was why I think City will be found, probably found innocent overall. Now, I've done videos before with uh, finance people, what we call them finance experts, um, why a lot of these... 115 charges. Okay, they relate to sometimes, so over a period of 10 years, the same issue 10 times. Okay, you said this might have said you did this wrong this year and another eight or nine years. So then, well, where there are 115 charges, but they're not all different charges. It might be the same charge over different years. So that makes the numbers sound huge. I mean, if you if you were to say there's one charge for this year and the others, you've got the same thing for 10 years, we're going to put it as one charge. You might have only ended up with 30 charges. Still, 30 charges is still a lot. 115 is a humongous amount. And it sounds worse than it is. You know, People are going to say, well, you've got 115 charges. There's no smoke without fire. But if you exonerate, if you dismiss one of one charge that's over 10 years you can just miss 10 at once potentially okay now a lot of these charges relate to um city inflating sponsorship or getting owner investment okay disguised as sponsorship so they say you inflated these deals this deal was 40 million actually it was only 8 million or only 8 million, 8 million was paid you did the rest as some jiggery porkery now Jiggery porkery is a technical word for accounting. I suggest lots of dodgy things go on. Okay. There's a line, black, and it's not black and white, but there's a line, there's a bit of gray areas, and people try and work around the gray. City got done with this before by UEFA working around the gray. As City said, UEFA did us. I mean, that's actually what Everton is saying about the Premier League. They say, we were working with you. You said this was okay, and then you change your minds, and suddenly you've, you've busted us. It's like an inside job. You know, we're telling you how to how to do things to comply, and then we change the rules. Because, and we know we're changing the rules, and we know you're not going to comply, and we're going to diddle you. That's what that's the feel it has. So, um, 
yeah, these 115 charges um, and the sponsorship and the, and the inflated sponsorship, a lot of them I think are just going to fall to the side. Because one thing is these deals have got to be at market value. Okay. UEFA have already looked at city sponsorship deals and said, one, they're at fair market value because what the sponsors are paying, let's look at, I mean, they talk about the Etihad deal. They talk about the Etihad deal for the for the stadium. And when that Etihad deal came out, it was 40 million quid a year, a year for 10 years. People said, that's ridiculous. How can you get shirt sponsorship of 40 million quid when you're little old city? Okay. There were three elements to that deal, apparently, from what I remember going back. Okay, there was a shirt sponsorship. There was a naming rights on the stadium. And then there was the development of the academy. Okay, now actually the development of the academy was that money is, is outside FFP and PSR because that's infrastructure uh, and the academy. So I think that, that's, that was safe anyway. As far as I uh, remember, we were getting 25 million for the shirt sponsorship. 5 million for the naming rights of the stadium and 10 million a season for the academy. Now, actually, that's quite reasonable. People said 5 million for naming rights is, un is, is ridiculous. Clubs are getting what? Man United were getting 30, 40 million for sponsoring their training kit. Just think about that. Does that sound reasonable? With a big company, DHL, I think. So you got to say it's, it sounds excessive but someone's willing to pay it so five million naming rights other clubs are, i think spurs were looking at 20 million they were trying to get for their naming rights of their stadium that's not that's only 10 years after city were getting five million a year for the naming of naming rights of their stadium which i've suggested at the time i suggested that 40 million pound deal was fair and actually i said it probably undervalues unless there's a option to increase it during the term of the contract, that's going to undervalue City. 25 million for a sh shirt sponsorship. Let's look at that. I think it was reasonable. You could argue maybe it should have been 20. But I, I said at the time, look at what others are getting. And it was within a few years. Chelsea were getting, was it 60 million quid for theirs? United were getting from Chevy, Chevrolet 50 odd million quid. So I said 25 is quite reasonable. I said, actually, I think it's going to undervalue City because what happened was, you know, we were a very hot commodity. We were winning the Premier League. We were winning the FA Cup, going in the Champions League. Um, a very, uh, our name was getting pushed out there more and more. We were desirable to sponsor. And that's not just from these Arab companies, United, uh, UAE, Abu Dhabi companies or whatever. That's just generally. The fact that, Puma are now paying a city, I think, £65 million for their kit deal. It's huge. Nike were underpaying us because Nike were lucky. They got us uh, at a time where we were that transformation was happening. They got a fantastic value for the money they were paying. Puma are paying, I think, £65 million. Quid. That's reasonable. That's absolutely reasonable. Uh, so for uh, Etihad Airways to be paying £25 million quid a year, I said that was fair. It was fair because UEFA said so. They said it as well. Um, whatever you want to look behind that, but in the end, they said it. it's, a, it's a fair market value, fair reflection of what someone would pay. Are you meaning to tell me that if City were out there on the open market, five Premier League titles in six seasons, Champions League finalists, Champions League winners, Centurions, yeah, one of the best managers ever in world football, some of the best football you've ever seen, City are out there in the limelight, biggest club, you know, biggest turnover in the world now. You know, um, as I said, winning all these trophies. Very, very desirable to sponsor City. It is. Um, that's why we've got people like Nissan, Nexen Tires, all these regional partners, all these global partners. And that's why, uh, as I said at the time, 25 million on the shirt deal is peanuts. It's undervaluing City. And as I said, very soon, Clubs were getting 20, uh, were getting 30 million, 50 million, 60 million shirt deals. I think York Armour Tires was 60 million quid for Chelsea. Are you telling me that's not that's fair value? If it is for them, 30, 40 million for City on Etihad is fair value. So I don't think there's any issue about that. Uh, th some of the issues are about who paid the money. Okay, that's 
I think Colin Savage went over th those details. We've done that before. Cass has looked at that. We kind of got, we basically got off. Oh, well, I wouldn't even say got off. Nothing was proven against City. Some people say because you had technicalities, you had the time bar issue. Uh, end of the day, C Cass found City not guilty. Now, you could argue it didn't find City innocent. They found they're not guilty. Oh, I don't care what you argue. It's semantics, okay? S City walked away with from there, paying a 10 million fine, I think, for not cooperating. So as far as I'm concerned, that's all right. So I think a lot of these charges, um, they're not trumped. Are they trumped up? It is quite odd. It is quite odd that before one of these select committees in, in, in the House of Commons, before the day before, these charges drop. When they're looking at getting an independent regulator, these charges drop against City. The day before. Basically, I think it's performative the way they're trying to say there's no need for an independent regulator. Look, we can regulate ourselves. We're doing it. Look at it. Okay. But here's the thing. The day before Masters, uh, Richard Masters was going to appear before the select committee again this, this week or last week, whatever, Everton and Forrest are charged the day before. So again, we said, hey, look, what? come on, you know. You don't need to be intelligent to be able to see it's been done the day before to give the impression that they're doing something. A load of poppycock. You know, far too much, as I said earlier in this uh, in this piece, far too much of what goes on is directed by Liverpool, Man United, Everton. Not Everton, sorry. Liverpool, Man United, <laughs> Everton uh, and uh, Arsenal. And so let, let's just swing Spurs. And a lot of clubs who went along, who are now complaining about FFP, they went along with it. You need a 14, uh, I think you need 14 out of the 20 Premier League clubs to uh, agree to something to make a change, to make a change, okay? A lot of these clubs agree to it. Now they're crying about it. Uh, there's an old proverb, as you sow, so shall you reap. And these clubs are reaping what they sowed. I mean, I'm sure Everton went along with FFP. What about Forest? Did they... I, you know, they weren't in the Premier League at the time, so I don't think they could. But cl clubs are wincing now, especially if you've got money. They're wincing because they can't spend what they want. The only one of the major clubs, top six, let's say, who are the top six? Liverpool, Man United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs, Man City. Only one club, I think, wanted an independent regulator. That was Manchester City. Because... There's too much strength in what goes on. I'm diverting a bit. Um, but a few years ago, there was talk of Manchester United and Liverpool basically trying to take control of the Premier League, having a say in who's appointed in high positions and how it's the direction. What a load of rubbish. They're doing it for themselves. Absolutely doing it for themselves, trying to take control. So got to be very, very careful about what goes on. Politics is all dirty, all dirty stuff. They want that power and influence so that they can retain their power and influence. They, you know, some of the American owners would like a close shop. They would like no relegation and no promotion so that they know what budgets they are and then their money just increases and increases and increases. Look what's happening in America at the moment. Was it, if I'm right, New York, was it um, New York State, was it the Buffalo Bills Stadium? And they're apparently giving them $850 million to help them build a new stadium. These people starving, people homeless, and all, all that because they're worried that if they don't give them the money, I mean, the owners are multi multi billionaire. If they don't give them the money, they might move the franchise somewhere else. So they lose out. So they basically are over a barrel and they're contributing. Um, you know, that, that's how unfair things like that are. And I'm sure the American owners would like a similar situation over in the Premier League where there's no promotion, no relegation. It's a close shot. Once you're in there, you're in. Nobody else can get in. That's just not the done thing. It's not sporting. And it's not how football fans in this country want to see. We want, we like that having that pyramid, knowing that you know a club like Luton could be in the National League or the Division 2 and make their way up to the Premier League. We're seeing it with um, Ipswich, like, almost, well, possibly, going from Division 1, League 1, up to the Premier League, if they can keep sustaining it. Or Wrexham moving through the divisions, or Stockport moving. Anybody has the opportunity to start in the 10th layer of tenth tier of English football and move their way all the way to the top. In America, that just doesn't happen. So you can see why they want it. As I said, it keeps their power, influence, and their money in place. 
So going back to these 115 charges, as I said, I think a lot of them are, are, are it's very repetitive. Once you clear your name of possibly one charge, that could wipe out another eight or nine. Um, so I think Colin said there was four main areas of uh, uh, four issues. Um, and I think most of them are just going to get blown away because they got blown away at UEFA. What's changed? And as Stefan said, the reason why this is serious, so serious, that basically what you're alleging is that a lot of the top people at City were in on this. The accountants were either ignorant, naive, or in on this. Lots of other advisors were in on this. People like um, who would buy shares in City, City Football Group. I uh, forgot the name of the company in America. We bought $500 million worth of shares at 10% of the company, Silver Lake. Their due diligence and their experts were ignorant or naive or stupid or whatever. There's got to be a lot of people in on this. Okay. Now, I can see why companies might make advantageous deals because they think there's something in it for them. But it's the same way as like, was it New Balance or Warrior? Warrior sponsoring Liverpool. Warrior, I think, a New Balance company based in Boston. You ask yourself, they've not done anything in football before. They were Boston-based. Same city as John Henry's FSG. You know, so you do get your mates sometimes coming in and helping you out. It happens, okay? But as long as it's a, a reasonable, as I said, a, a fair values, there's no big issues with that. Um, so when it, I think when it boils down to it, it is going to be a, a major thing. But as Stefan said, so many people have to be colluding or naive or looking the other way or being stupid or unintelligent. It just doesn't seem right. You know, and you've been lying to the stock exchange or, or, or the uh, company's house or the HMRC and, and everybody, you've been lying to everybody. And I, that just seems preposterous. Now, there's nothing to say it doesn't happen because you look at someone like Enron. I mean, you've got to go back 20 years for Enron when they went bust in America. That was a big con, okay? And executives, I think, some of them have gone to jail forever. Andersons, who were there, uh, auditors, Bang, disappeared. They went out of business. They puff like that almost overnight. So, because they, they, you know, they allowed this to happen and they said, uh, we didn't notice. Well, yeah, okay, uh, whatever. Okay, so it, it can happen. There's been other instances where companies, huge companies, have, have basically been fraudulent and the auditors have been signing off and they've been pulling the wool over lots of people's eyes. But they're only very few and far between. Now, you have to see it. For City to be guilty here, they have to be one of these things. And, it, and you think to yourself, City are owned by and run by clever people. Very clever people. Um, and they wouldn't need to do this. They, they, they would have either have to be so stupid to think they could get away with it or naive to have done things wrong and not cover their tracks. Because... You'd think if you're in, intelligent enough, you find ways to cover your tracks. You don't leave yourself open uh, if you've done something wrong to, to getting caught, let alone getting prosecuted for it. So I just think it's very, very unlikely that so many people have been in on it. But if that's the case, City are going to get bollocked. They're going to get absolutely smashed, you know, banished, um, taking titles away, we saw with Juventus, no one really cares. No one's going to take away the treble winning season, no one's going to take anything that way because we did it sporting it on the pitch. People say, Oh, we got the money. There's lots of arguments, as I said, I've done it before. Why FAP is a load of rubbish and everything else. Um, but yeah, there you have it. I don't think City are going to get done. We're going to find out in the next whatever year or so. Um, and then I, I, I said, if City, whoever loses that, probably will appeal. City, I, I think City will throw everything at it. It's going to be really dangerous. It is a dangerous time for the Premier League at the moment. Um, because if they make mistakes, if Everton get relegated, I've said this before, if Everton get relegated by one point, and that's come from a points deduction, which they think is unfair, they're not going to go down quietly. 
because it's going to cost them 100 million pounds or something. You know, getting relegated, you get the parachute money, which is not the same as the Premier League money. You get the championship money, which combined is nowhere near the Premier League money. Uh, and then you get players who say, sorry, I want to leave. And if you haven't got them on re 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 relegation clauses, which you should have, a, a club like Everton and what's happened to them in the last few years, then you've been stupid, naive, unintelligent. Um, but if you haven't got them on uh, significant relegation clauses, then you're going to get battered. And there's a possibility, as I said before, that you go down the leagues because you get, uh, if you end up in administration, you can't, you've got this new stadium and everything else. You get go into administration, you get whacked some more points. So if you go into administration next season, you get whacked some more points. It is a crazy situation. Um, but, you know, and, and and then if you get exonerated, if you end up going to court, which I think Everton would do, and you get exonerated, uh, you get reinstated. But that might be in the middle of a season. It's a messy, messy business. The Premier League have to be on really solid, firm ground to be able to pull, pull this through. Uh, and if they're not, there's a risk. There's a risk to, to, to individuals. I said there's a risk to UEFA when they did the thing to City. You know, and that was sorted out. And it, that, that could have gone to court. And as I said before, I, I wish Everton end up getting relegated because they, they'll take it to court. And we'll get this FFP business sorted out probably once and for all if it goes to court. But that could take years to come to fruition. And... That is always going to be in the background of the uh, Premier League because, as I said, if Everton get exonerated six months down the line or 18 months down the line and they say, hang on, we should have been in the Premier League all the time, we want our money back. That's a, I don't know who pays. I have no idea. But, guys, uh, uh, I think that's enough uh, for this video. I, I should have done three videos instead of this one whopping video, I'm sure. Very few of you are going to watch right to the end. But if you have stayed with me, thank you very much. Thank you for staying <laughs> for about 40 minutes or whatever it's been. Uh, and if you can, if you're not subscribed, if you watch the video all this way through and you've not subscribed to the channel, what's wrong? So please subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you're notified as soon as new videos come out. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. Always nice to be liked. Hey, you get the thumbs up icon and you get the fireworks icons, guys. Thanks for joining me. Um, keep it here. Keep it at City Fan TV. We'll see you around, Blues.